Samaritan Behavioral Health. And today I have Chris West with me with Securing Hello. Lives. This is our first family engagement video. We are going to talk about gun safety and how to secure guns in the home. It is important that families get this information to help protect and reduce the harm to their children, to their own personal homes, and also to the community. Chris is here to present many of the fire uh, gun safety tools and he's going to explain each and then we're going to talk about it. Go ahead well, Chris. Thank you. Um, so as she just uh, introduced me, uh, Chris West, uh, prior military. I've also done concealed carry uh, business. Also I've done uh, conducted concealed carry courses. And so really one that drove a passion to be able to teach people how to be able to properly not only safely but also securely um, store firearms and the big thing to be able to hit on that is safely is be able to actually make sure that your little child even kind of your elementary ch school child even if your teenager can have access to that and then securely is actually then referencing to not only theft and burglary to be able to have those steps and so that we can kind of go from everything that's free that through Shea and her organization be able to hand out the gun locks um, which comes with the actual cable it comes with a key and actually a pamphlet that actually then talks about all the rules for proper firearm handling uh, the first one is that treating all firearms as though they are loaded so the second one is then keeping your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot the third one is being aware of your target and what is beyond it and then also seeing where your muzzle is uh, where your po muzzle is pointed and making sure that you're not pointing anything you're not wanting to shoot and so kind of quickly of what that really means uh, first so first of all every time I'm picking up a firearm I want to make sure that that firearm is truly unloaded and so in the same kind of all these steps together as I'm treating this like it's loaded I'm keeping my finger off the trigger I'm making sure that my muzzle is pointed away so I'm not pointing at Shay I'm not pointing here at the camera and then also being aware of where it's pointed and also what's beyond it so if you're at an apartment making sure that even when you're trying to store it is there somebody that's you know above you below you in that apartment next to you or that bedroom next to you great point and so when we're first talking about here and every time i'm picking up a fire i'm trying to make sure that i'm making sure that it is unloaded that there are no rounds in the chamber no rounds in the magazine and so when we're first looking at here a revolver if properly storing that revolver as the cable just goes through the cylinder well turning the key and then your key is out make sure that these keys are put up and the same thing we're kind of almost the repeat is looking here at the firearm and make sure that there's no magazine and there's also nothing loaded in the chamber and we're going to do the same thing so through the chamber and out the magazine well And once again, making sure that these keys are locked up safely. And go ahead. So Chris, I have a question. With, with our weapons at home being stored safely mm -hmm. and with the cable lock, where should we store a key lock, the uh, key? Mm -hmm. So I would suggest the keys, it's kind of a, it's kind of a decision that uh, yourself um, as the parent guardian of where to have them. Obviously, if you're gonna have them on your key ring, there's nothing wrong with that, but remembering it's kind of the same thing if you have a little child or even all the way up teenagers, that do you wanna have have, them have access to your car keys? Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid a little Johnny gets a hold of your cars, car keys and backs the car out of the driveway. Same kind of mindset. Now, if you have an additional safe that you can put that, that presents an extra layer of security. Okay. Um, but the big thing that having them locked up is a great first safe measure and then second make sure that those keys are separated and also that the ammunition is separated um, because any any of these things on here and anything we're going to be talking about today with time and materials can be overcome um, if you obviously if you had huge bolt cutters for ch you know for cutting log chain these are going to cut so when we're talking safety these are great safety things for little children okay. for elementary now once you kind of get into high schoolers time and material if you got pick locks or YouTube videos obviously things can be overcome and that's kind of where we're going to uh, 
uh, progress into better safety and then also getting into security so that, heaven forbid, there's a break-in to be able to make sure that you're trying to achieve the most safe and secure way to do your firearms. How quick is it, with practicing good safety locks mm -hmm. at home, how quick is it to now be able to protect yourselves in the home, to readily go Okay. Uh, you know, get it so if so, you're referencing if you would need to be able to have a firearm that you want to have loaded and ready, um, that heaven forbid you have to protect yourself or your family mm -hmm. um, against an intruder. Um, so when we're talking about a cable lock, if this is your first step, I mean it's going to take a couple minutes to be able to actually, or in a couple seconds to at least find the key. So you got to be able to the key wherever it is, whether it's on your key ring in your pocket, on the other nightstand. So you would have to be able to insert the key. Make sure you have the right key. So that's always the fun part, is making sure that you have the right key there and the lock comes out. Now, you, wherever you're having that magazine stored. Um, now, if we're talking about for self-defense, we would want to make sure our magazine is with it. Now, if you're trying to, if this is not your everyday carry or the everyone that you want to have loaded, I would suggest having the ammunition loaded separately. Um, but once you have the cable lock out, you'd be able to insert the magazine, be able to rock the slide forward, and then you'll be able to kind of rock and roll. Um, now talking about kind of answering with that, it's kind of then if we're then having cases to where if you want to have a firearm loaded in a case, that way you kind of remove the next step of having to load that firearm. Um, I would still suggest no matter what, having that firearm in a holster. Mm -hmm. And then that way, so then if you say, okay, I've got it loaded, but then I want it in a, a lockbox. This we're gonna we're talking about your different materials of lock boxes. This is where I would call your very soft material lock box. And so it has on each side it does have two locking points. But the thing to keep in mind of you kinda have to determine the age mentality of the people you're with because with these soft ones, it definitely is a safe thing because at least if you have it locked up in here or you have it in a holster, you can pry it a little bit. I mean, you're going to have to work, so if you've got a two-year-old, I would say this is a safe measure to have it locked, but once you get into kind of a stronger elementary school and especially a teenager, I would make sure that you have them um, actually in something a little bit more, and so that's where you kind of have to evaluate. Can we also have the cable lock? on the weapons while it's in the... You could. Thing. So, I mean, you've got multiple steps that you're going to evaluate here on. And so, kind of also kind of showing that if, say, we had a firearm loaded already, and we'll kind of show even in kind of real time that... And I had two different keys on it, so that's kind of where you have to determine your level of safety and security and versus being able to have self-defense. Self so if you wanted to, you could have then a cable lock on your revolver, but then that's kind of you have to evaluate, okay, is my, am I looking at my safety level versus a security level? And so the same thing. Now, if we're getting into a harder box, this definitely would be where you could have your cable lock on here. And this actually has then four locking points where it's a harder plastic, very hard to bend. Mm. Now, one thing that we're going on is kind of our, um, we'll kind of backtrack just a moment, is with your canvas bag, kind of is the same thing as your, plastic box, I would say maybe a little bit better, is because we could actually zip it up, and we'll make sure we'll stay on this side of the firearms for me, Shay, is where you can lock this up. So you have a better kind of locking point than I would say that plastic one, is because then, as you can see here, we've got a lock that goes around here, so you would have to compromise either the zipper or the lock. You can't pry it open as much as this, so you're kind of going kind of Good measure by having a cable lock on there. Uh, it's better that you're in a another stage and then kind of getting to your to even better. And then here we're getting into actual kind of still storage is in a hard plastic. Now to get to your, I want to have it kind of I would say kind of best of both worlds mm -hmm. is if you wanted that firearm to be able to be loaded and locked with quick access. This is when then we're kind of getting into these lock boxes. And so for this one, if we want to run it kind of mechanical, all you would do is just put your key in, turn it, and it opens up. And that's kind of your kind of lower end, kind of if it's just purely key driven or a three digit combo. Now this one actually has a RFID reader that runs off my wrist. And so then we have kind of very quick access. I'm still able to get it. So even if you're fumbling the night, you still notice 
still pointed away, <coughs> that you still have your trigger covered. Nothing's in the way of that trigger. So all of these safety measures are, are great for parents at home to make sure that their weapons are secure, starting first with the cable lock. Yes, ma'am. And that will be the least expensive, especially since that cable lock is, we're, we're giving the cable locks to parents and anyone in the community that may want one, the cable locks will be free. At the end of this video, we will have information on how you can uh, uh, get a free cable lock. And so as you mentioned, we're already, it's free. And so free is free is free. Uh, we're saying you'll have to see this bright and shiny face to come get your cable lock. Um, but as she mentioned, the free cable locks come with where it's a full cable, a key, and then actually an instruction booklet that kind of goes over kind of the four rules for safe farm handling. And then also talks about these different things. And then even does talk about to where conversation you might have to have in your home of whether you have a felon in the home or if you have um, potential for suicide. Uh, these are all conversations that need to be happening at each stage of owning firearms and even readdressing um, going through, especially everything going right now in our society is kind of readdressing that, kind of understanding your emotional health. Um, so what we have for free, free is free, free, and real free, all the way up if you went to, say if you're already out and you're already at Sporting Goods, um, cable locks can run from, say, five bucks, maybe up to 20. Um, this case you could find kind of same of like five dollars up to maybe the soft plastic, maybe 20 or 30. Uh, this harder one is where you've got different sizes. So you could be going from something that's, you know, a small, small case that's just for one pistol that's very hard to get into because a harder plastic could be 20, all the way up to kind of bigger boxes that could be up to about 80, 90 dollars. Um, this one I actually got free, um, but if you bought even just the canvas case and we're still only talking maybe 10 to 20 and so everything from free so no excuse to be able to have that firearm locked up um, all the way to a rapid um, safe here to where it's either running off of fingerprint keys uh, touch um, some of you you can work off of phones and so those can run from where you might have one from $50 all the way up to $350 and so I know $350 is no one has that just to throw around um, but it's enough to be able to determine okay if I at least have it safe where my child can get it and then as we're getting into okay we really need to be focused on security and so as you can see here on this one actually comes with it where this one will actually run off of either you can plug it into the wall or has four AA batteries and then actually an anchor cable to where you could anchor it down uh, say in your house to where anything that's a very sturdy thing that can't just be easily lifted and not I wouldn't put the leg over something I'd pay you know a sturdy something you'd have to unscrew or you have to dismantle to be able to get that and that's kind of then now we're working into definitely more not only safe but also secure okay one point that I did like at the beginning when you said having that conversation it is important that parents have the conversation if you have weapons in your home with your child from a toddler to high schoolers uh, to have that conversation of security and safety, making sure that they know that weapons should not be touched. They they are not toys. And I believe you're going to talk some uh, about the Nerf guns. Or yeah, I've got that kind of a, a conclusion. Is kind of at the but since we're already kind of mentioning it, is that's where the conversation can already start. And we're even this weekend with my kids of talking about squirt guns, uh, not squirting people in the face with the Nerf guns, not shooting people in the face. Um, yeah, I mean I can we can grab them over and kind of talk about them. And so even you see the whole time, still this is where the conversations can begin and be modeled. As you see, all the real firearms, even with the Nerf gun, is still pointed this way. And so still a conversation um, that even with my boys is still a matter of, these get locked up with my safe. So it's kind of really instilling that, that even with the Nerf gun, that yeah, that might damage your eye, might scratch your eye, might even poke your eye out. Uh, but maybe not as we're talking lethal, but as we get into BB guns, that's really the conversation we need to have that maybe not shouldn't be in a toy chest in the toy room, but locked up with your safes or locked up in an actual long gun case that we'll be talking about next. Okay, thank you.
So now as we're going to be talking about long guns, uh, the thing we're going to be, it's almost kind of a little bit of repeat, maybe things a little bit different, a little bit more things to understand, um, even getting into the size where you have a handgun that's, well, handgun size, then we're just going to be getting into long guns, we're going into the long gun size. And so first thing we're looking at uh, here is a, a shotgun. So the big thing we're making sure that is it is unloaded. So first thing I'm going to look down, make sure there's nothing in here. Make sure there's nothing else loaded. We'll just do that again, make sure there's nothing in there. And so as we're going to be securing a long gun, whether we're talking here like a common shotgun or also a common rifle, it's kind of going to be operating kind of the same way with our cable lock. And remember, these cable locks you can pick up for free. Here it's just going to be running through the chamber and out the magazine well. And the key goes, and remember, to make sure we secure that key of where that needs to go. Um, so the next thing we're going to looking at is we're going to keep that cable lock on there as kind of already a good safe measure already. And then kind of going into an additional lock here is as we're having this kind of canvas case, just like we had before. Thank you. It's kind of now we're kind of going once again into another step because here we have a locking web loop and then it goes around the keychain or the uh, key. And then once we're going to be able to push that in and we get locked. So not only do we got a canvas bag that someone can't actually access and play with it, but now it's also that's locked and the canvas bag is then has the shotgun that then has that cable lock through it. So as we're going through kind of almost the repeat again, is looking at our soft shell case here. And so you can already kind of see where it's a good safety device, but I wouldn't call it a very secure device. But you have to be able to look at your finances and determine that you can't wait to buy the big stand up $300, $500 safe. If this is $10, $15 case here, so that's the job of keeping your family safe. That's a good thing to have right now. Then you're going to be able, be able to evaluate that, okay, next payday, we're going to get up to a bigger case. So Chris, are you able to use, you know, locks like this on a soft case like that? Since you can. So uh, yes, ma'am. So you can use a case just like that. The thing we're getting into where this one has two locking points or three locking points, one at each end and the one here in the middle, the issue would we get back again is being able to actually have that where kind of holding that tight with one hand, and you still pry that open a little bit. Now, can someone fully be able to get that thing out? I would say for a three-year-old, it's probably hold, hard for a three-year-old, but once you get into that elementary um, kid or you get into a high schooler, they might be able to, with that time and opportunity, to be able to actually break into that. And so that's where you have to kind of evaluate that at least the cable lock. We got a free cable lock, it costs us free. That we can lock up that shotgun and then kind of move up to where, okay, we got that $10 gun case, and then we can go on to even then the harder one that has, that's kind of as we said before, with a harder plastic that now has four locking, or four here, and then <clears throat> be able to actually put on then two padlocks. And so once you have these in here, it is quite hard. You would have to go out and get bolt cutters. You would have to get some kind of things to defeat the actual locks or defeat the plastic here. So once again, it's all about making sure that the harm of, of hurt is being reduced. Uh, we're not taking a political stand, you know, should, should we have weapons in the home, should we not? It's all about making sure that your child, your home, your community is remaining safe. And so just kind of to echo, it, echo that is starts kind of from that beginning. Starts from where if they're going over to somebody else's house to also make sure does it does that family, do they have firearms? Mm -hmm. So it starts even when your kids with the play dates and then all the way going up where it's, as she said, non-political, non-partisan to where it's just a matter of keeping everybody safe that no kids, no teenagers get harmed, no one can break into your house and steal those and then use those in a crime. So this is all about safety and security for people inside the home and everybody outside the home. Thank you. And so one thing I wanted to kind of touch on is the thing that I 
definitely not advise is to be able to have trigger locks. Definitely not a, a proponent of trigger locks because you have to introduce that into the trigger. And then in addition to that, you can actually still load up the, you can still load up the shotgun, you can still rack a round, you can still put a round in the chamber. And this is whether you're talking for handguns, shotguns. And so if this is not secure, 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 then that firearm can still be used. It can still be pulled to be able to hit against the trigger. So I'm definitely to advise against anything that has a, using a trigger guard, especially where, once again, we have a free cable lock. So I would suggest using that cable lock. Um, if you have something that, well, you're saying, well, the firearm I had, there's no way I can use that cable lock. Well, we already talked about all the different cases that we can have, we can be able to use to be able to have that. So we're kind of eliminating, Everybody kind of held accountable, but also kind of being sensible and kind of a community outreach here. Of, there's no excuse to be able to have those firearms locked up. Um, so the thing we're and I have, go ahead. Sorry, no, I have plenty of cable locks. So uh, once again, that information will be made available for you to contact me in order to get a cable lock. No questions asked. I am willing to give free cable locks to anyone who will need them. If if you have three guns at home and they are not secure, <laughs> you need three cable locks, I have them. No questions asked. It's all about making sure your home, your family, your community is remaining safe. I can't stress that enough. Thank you. Um, one thing I want to kind of hit on before we go on and we're talking about ammo cans um, is the only thing about outside the home or inside the home but also kind of outside the home but also in your car um, understanding if you have to um, finally take the kids back to school if you're going to church different activities um, even businesses that um, have chosen not to have firearms in their in their establishment to be able to how you have those locked up um, and so the couple cases that we showed earlier and especially that quick access safe or the ones that operate the same way where it's mechanical um, those small little mechanical safes can also only run between 10 to maybe 30 45 dollars so something you can anchor down around your car seat or an anchor point in your car or in your trunk. Um, so also kind of remembering that also outside the home mm -hmm. um, is kind of a small tidbit. I want to make sure we, we did cover. Um, so next thing we're kind of looking on is then kind of your different ammo storage. And so one we have here would be for your shotgun. And Michelle's and you kind of see where kind of taking safety of the biggest bit is those are actually the nerf rounds for the nerf gun I had earlier oh. and so this where you can either have a small little lock or I just use a zip tie and so using kind of a, a, a good safe method um, but then you can also take that and be able to put it into another ammo can so that you can make sure that those don't get kind of pried open and used because they're the soft plastic again um, on this style here is where we're going to get into once again you've got a good safe measure we'll make sure that we're kind of getting better into security is even with the lock on it's a good measure to be able to actually have that that you can still kind of pry open a little bit mm -hmm. but once again if you've got a three-year-old this might do the job but if you've got a teenager you're still allowing them access to that ammo go ahead so not only should you're saying definitely secure the firearms, but also secure the ammunition that right that when you have. for anything that you're not going to have that loaded for say that self defense so say one or two firearms you're going to have ready. So if you've got that hunting rifle you only use once a year, you've got grandfather's revolver that you're not using. You're not having that stage for for self defense um, to be able to have those then separated. Okay. Um, so the last one I'll kind of show you, and kind of the, the neat little trick that even I was happy to learn about, is your stereotypical military ammo cans. Is once you lift up the handle, and you actually be able to run what I call, like grew up calling the our gate lock or cable lock, and be able to actually just run that through there, and then here try to get that open. <laughs> It's quite hard. I mean, you would have to get kind of okay. back to that tools, time, and materials. And so if you have to go out to the shed to get the bolt cutters or someone has to actually get hard tools, not just, you know, this plastic spoon or a fork out of the kitchen, you can see that we're kind of taking everything all the way to the end. Um, and the thing to keep in mind is even if for kind of that ultimate of the ultimate is that huge gun safe that's wide and heavier, that if obviously if you can't afford that, it's understandable. So first starts, once again, the free cable lock. And then as you're moving up, you can also, of the kind of the different ankle cable, anchor cables, you can also be able to use those to where you could take a good 
hefty case like this and having it run through the lock with an anchoring cable and then having it linked, linked into your closet or underneath the bed to where if someone broke in and tried to steal this case, because it even does have wheels, <laughs> so to make it not as easy to be able to take away, you could also get a cable to secure that until you can kind of then move up to the large safes. Um, so all the options are available that we have here. Um, do you have any questions before we kind of conclude? No, uh, excellent. Uh, just, you know, we have to be mindful, like Chris said, when we go visit other people's homes to make sure, you know, those questions are, are never asked, you know. We don't know who is carrying weapons legally or not legally, but when, when we go places, we need to make sure that uh, our children, yourself, you are safe. So those those conversations are conversations that we need to have with our friends, with our families, and when people come in. If you have weapons in your home that you have not secured, never even thought about securing because, oh, my child knows not to t touch mm. that weapon. Your child may know, but that neighbor's child may not know. So Very good point. <laughs> we're just asking that you make sure you continue to have that talk with your kids, but also secure your weapons. I have free cable locks please contact me. Chris, anything you would like to add before I give the information on how you can get the cable locks? No, ma'am. I appreciate kind of your time and letting me kind of oh, share with this and wonderful. kind of the passion for making sure everybody's staying safe in our home and our community. Great. So uh, Chris is with Securing Lives and I am with Samaritan Behavioral Health. If you need a gun lock, please contact Alicia McCollum. 937-734-3484, that's my office number. You may also send me a um, email at atmccollum at premierhealth.com. That's atmccollum at premierhealth.com. And the number again is 937-734-3484. Thank you for tuning in to our first family engagement with Chris West, securing lives to make sure that you are safe at home and in your community. Thank you.